Doom's timeline is divided into three major portions. The first of which is the classic universe, which contains all of the original games and their expansions. Upon its conclusion, Doom Guy travels to an entirely different universe, which is around the time Doom the Dark Ages begins, followed by Doom 3, maybe, Doom 2016, and Doom Eternal. The Doom Slayer from the new games is the same character depicted in the originals, but this particular timeline video will only delve into the events from the original timeline. So if you don't like new Doom for some reason, it's okay to be wrong. Luckily for you, this video won't delve into any of those events at all. Alright, with that out of the way, let's begin. Before the original Doom's events began, Doom Guy, our hero, trained under a female marine much like himself that went by the name Crash. This woman had considerable skill and was a valuable soldier. In a roundabout way, she was instrumental in helping transform Doom Guy, a normal man, into the Doom Slayer. It was her training that, at least in some part, helped Doom Guy survive the horrors of his future and eventually become an ultimate god-killing badass much later. Her value and skill wouldn't go unnoticed, as dark cosmic forces would eventually move to capture her and force her to compete in a series of sick war games, but that is a story for a different time. After his training, Doom Guy was eventually assigned to an unknown unit with a rather unpleasant leader. In fact, he was so unpleasant that our hero assaulted him, but with good reason. You see, the unnamed officer ordered Doom Guy and some of his other subordinates to fire upon civilians. He didn't take this lightly, and in response, he beat the absolute shit out of him. His so-called leader's severely damaged form was bundled into a full-body cast and sent to Pearl Harbor, while Doom Guy was shipped off to a backwater UAC facility on one of Mars' moons as punishment for his choices. The UAC was a huge company that worked in conjunction with the United States military. However, given the vast amount of resources at the UAC's disposal, it seemed as though these militaristic task forces were controlled by them instead of the government. The UAC owned and operated several radioactive waste facilities on Mars as well as its moons, Phobos and Deimos. With what was basically their own private army, the UAC were able to experiment with several clandestine projects, receiving no real pushback. One such project was a new form of travel that made use of an alternate dimension. Using this new dimensional travel, they had been able to open portals and transport materials from one of Mars' moons to the other. At the time, assigning Doom Guy here was a waste of his talents. The man was a hardened space marine, and his skill set would normally be best used elsewhere. Crash had trained him in various forms of combat, effectively making him one of Earth's most elite soldiers, but here, he was forced to simply bide his time. Unbeknownst to him, experiments by the UAC continued, and the gateways located on Phobos and Deimos would gradually become more and more unstable. Anyone that ventured inside would either disappear or return a shell of their former selves. These individuals, now completely insane, would attack any living being and eventually their bodies would literally explode. A few hours before Doom Guy began his fight, Mars received a frantic transmission from Phobos, requesting military support. Moments later, Deimos completely disappeared from the Red Planet's orbit. Since Doom Guy and his fellow Space Marines were the only combat-ready forces in the vicinity, he was sent to Phobos to figure out just what the hell was going on out there. Once he arrived, he was ordered to stay behind and secure the entryway of the base while his compatriots ventured further into the facility. Not long after their departure, the sounds of pain and agony flooded Doomguy's comms before finally falling silent. Judging by the cacophony of anguish he'd just heard, it was highly likely that he was the only human being alive on the entire moon. As a result, it would be up to him to learn what happened to his brothers-in-arms and unintentionally discover what the UAC had been experimenting with. The structure Doom Guy initially found himself in served as a hangar for incoming transports, and he'd soon need to make his way through it to see what was going on. As he pushed forward, each haunted hall was filled with heinous monsters and horrific creatures, some of which were zombified versions of his allies. The hideous beasts and former friends flung their bodies at him, lobbing bullets in his direction and giving him no choice but to kill them. The more of this strange enemy he fought, the more he came to realize what they were. This wasn't just some terrorist group or strange alien virus. These monsters were demons. Demons from hell. He killed imps, which were human-sized, brown, spiky-skinned, bipedal, fireball-hurling monsters, and zombified soldiers with shotguns and rifles, twisted into inhuman versions of their former selves. Eventually, he made his way out of the hangar and onto the surface of the rocky moon. Doomguy undoubtedly felt that his only choice of escaping this living hell was by continuing through the remaining facilities on Phobos. Perhaps he hoped to find a way off the natural satellite, or maybe he just wanted to do some pest control. Either way, he pushed on, entering a nuclear plant. 
In it, he found nothing but more monsters and likely a new level of hatred for the foul beings as he came across the mangled remains of his fallen comrades. Each corpse was sporting their own set of body armor, the very same kind he too wore. He would also stumble upon strange artifacts from the mysterious dimension these evil creatures had originated from. He'd end up collecting odd potions and even stranger orbs containing a power that was unknown to him. After fighting through the nuclear plant, he made his way through the toxin refinery, a military base, command control for the local buildings, the Phobos lab, central processing, and a computer station. As he battled his way through each facility, he occasionally came into contact with new breeds of demons, such as the large pink bull-like monsters that wielded their sharp teeth and razor-like claws as weapons. Regardless of what the demons sent his way, though, he killed them all and finally made it to the last structure, an abnormality on the surface of the moon, a Phobos anomaly. Once inside, he found himself in the presence of two deadly demonic entities, Barons of Hell. These tall, hairy, and leathery-skinned goat men towered above him, flinging green balls of blistering fire in his direction when given the chance. He ducked and weaved through their projectiles, firing round after round into their flesh until they each crumpled into an inanimate heap. Now that they had been killed, he was free to approach a nearby symbol on the ground, but before he stepped on it, he surely took notice of its strange appearance and how it was seemingly etched with demonic sigils. Either the UAC was conducting some kind of satanic ritual to create the doorways into hell, or worse yet, this was created by demon kind. Regardless of who made it, there was only one way forward. He stepped onto the arcane device and was instantaneously transported elsewhere. Immediately upon materializing, he was viciously attacked by a horde of demons. The beasts clawed at his flesh and ripped at his clothing. He was hurt badly, but in the end, he laid them to waste. After slaying the newly found adversaries, he came to realize that he had been teleported to the Demo space, but something was wrong. It stunk like rotten meat, and it looked as if Satan had been their interior decorator. The building was littered with demonic symbols and other strange structures. As it turns out, the entire moon had been transported to the shores of hell, somehow swallowed up by their dimension. The portal he had entered seemed to be what the UAC had built to conduct their original test, the experiment that allowed them to transport something from one moon to the other. Or maybe these so-called anomalies hadn't been created by the UAC after all. Perhaps they had simply found the bizarre structures instead. If Doomguy wondered about any of this, he didn't say. But he surely contemplated whether or not the paraphernalia strewn about the base was here prior to Demos being teleported into hell, or if it was all added by the demons afterwards. It didn't matter though, because there was no way to know for sure, and hordes of new demons were intent on keeping him quite busy. He slayed bizarre cycloptic red flying spheres that possessed enormous mouths and had the ability to spit deadly orbs of plasma. Smaller animalistic skulls bathed in hellfire hurled themselves at him using unknown means of propulsion. He pushed on, fighting his way across the surface of Deimos and through its various facilities. After exiting from the Deimos anomaly, he ventured through a containment area, a refinery, the Deimos lab, a command center, the fortress of mystery, a hellish place called the Halls of the Damned, and the spawning bats. After killing everything within each location, Doomguy would finally arrive at a great structure, a building of some kind called the Tower of Babel. It didn't appear to have been designed by humanity, and if it had, why? Regardless, he climbed the edifice, and once he reached the apex, he came face to face with a monster unlike any he'd seen before. This entity towered above him and had been augmented with cybernetic technology, seemingly human in origin. It rapidly propelled deadly explosions in his general direction, but as fast as the projectiles were, Doomguy was faster, and he had acquired a rocket of his own. He fired shot after shot into the beast until it roared in agony and collapsed in on itself, exploding into a cloud of red mist. With the behemoth slain, Doomguy was able to come to a disturbing conclusion. The Demo space was somehow suspended far above the actual surface of hell. With no apparent means of escape, he quickly determined that he had no choice but to make his way down to the surface and fight on. The lone soldier battled his way across the inferno that stretched out before him, defeating any demon dumb enough to get in his way. He battled through a hell keep, the slew of despair, literal pandemonium, the house of pain, an unholy cathedral, Mount Erebus, the hell warrens, and a limbo-like place. Eventually, he'd make his way to an area called Dis, and within it, a gigantic new hellish entity would make its appearance. A massive beast simply referred to as the Spider Mastermind. A highly intelligent demon seemingly augmented with cybernetic human technology. This monstrosity, he would come to learn, had been orchestrating the invasion of the Mars bases the whole time, a fact that Doomguy would make the creature regret. 
After a brief skirmish and a few well-placed rockets, the spider mastermind was killed, and suddenly a portal appeared. With no other choice but to continue onward, Doomguy stepped through the gateway and found himself back on Earth. He relaxed. It seemed the nightmare had ended. He scanned the horizon and saw nothing but grass and sunshine until he turned his gaze behind him. In the distance, a large city was engulfed in flames and the sky had turned a hellish red hue. But worse yet, his beloved pet and friend, Daisy the Rabbit, had been targeted and killed during Hell's invasion on Earth. While he was busy fighting the Spider Mastermind's forces in Hell, another Spider Mastermind had made its way to Earth and its legions were responsible for the death of his friend. They'd pay for what they'd done. Doomguy fought his way through the demon-infested city and laid waste to the other Spider Mastermind's forces until finally taking the fight to the eight-legged freak itself. A brief battle ensued, but the so-called Mastermind was no match for Doomguy's newly acquired weapon, the BFG, a gun that possessed unbelievable power. Unfortunately, though, his fight hadn't ended at the death of the second Mastermind. The demons had launched a full-scale invasion on Earth, and now, with vengeance in his heart, it was up to Doomguy alone to make them regret stepping foot on this planet. After the new mastermind fell, an additional portal was revealed. Like before, with no other choice but to proceed onward, he stepped through. When Doomguy materialized, he found himself in a new place, no longer on the surface of his home planet. A demonic entity known as Baphomet had caused the teleporter to malfunction by making use of a demonic sigil, and instead of escaping the Helltorn city, he was transported back into the demonic dimension once again. He stepped forth and began wading his way through the newly created corpses of his fallen adversaries. After battling through this particularly hellish pocket of demonic forces, Doomguy made his way into yet another teleporter and leapt through. Where Doomguy ended up after teleporting is unclear. Regardless, shortly after, he piled into a drop pod, a small one-man vehicle designed to launch an individual from the air onto the ground and blast it off. Once he landed, a grisly scene sat before him. Buildings on fire, and fleeing from them, were civilians. The demons weren't just in the city he'd fought in before, they were everywhere. All at once, he knew what needed to be done. It was up to him to fight back. As the only survivor of the Mars conflict, he was the right man for the job, the only man for the job. It was up to him to save the planet. Humanity had quickly created a plan to help them survive the demonic invasion. Those that wanted to live were being funneled into enormous spaceships designed to get them as far away from the doomed world as possible. The problem was, the ships couldn't take off. Doomguy, along with what remained of Earth's soldiers, made their way to a spaceport where the ships were meant to exit from, fighting the demons along the way. As they fought, each of them fell to the monstrous onslaught. All but one man. As he marched onward, he found and made use of a UAC stimulant package. These drugs had been nicknamed Berserk, thanks to their ability to enhance the user's physical capabilities. With the chemical cocktail flowing through his veins, he literally tore his enemies with his bare hands. A gigantic cyber demon soon made its presence known, and he immediately was overcome with the blood-fueled desire to see the creature's immense innards being spilled. Just as the lone marine plunged his fist forward in an attempt to rip the creature's huge guts from its body, his strength waned slightly. The berserk was flushing from his system, and his punch was no longer powerful enough to puncture the monster's thick flesh. With no other choice, he ran, but not out of cowardice. No, no, he ran to find a weapon, the means to kill the hideous beast. He needed a gun. A big gun. After defeating several more of the Dark Denizens, he stepped through a portal and found himself in a series of new rooms. And one was the weapon he had originally sought, a tool he had grown accustomed to using in the demon-ridden halls of the Mars bases, the BFG-9000. Many more demons attempted to stop him from reaching the death-dealing device, but none were successful. BFG-9000 now in hand, he made his way back to the cyber demon from before. The instant he entered the next room, his quarry fired an explosive projectile in his direction, but he dodged it with ease. Sudden elation had started to consume his mind, and he quickly raised the tool of destruction so that it was pointing at the behemoth. Doomguide pulled the trigger, unleashing a torrent of destruction towards the cyber demon, killing the beast instantly. Though the battle was won, the war was far from over, and Earth wasn't about to defend itself. These demons would pay for what they'd done to humanity, and they'd pay for taking Daisy's life. This he would ensure. If you want to know more about the Doom comic, I actually have a video going into more detail already on the channel. Go check it out after this if you want. Doom Guy eventually made his way to the building and forced his way inside. The evil was ready for him, but he was ready for them too. Just like before, he strolled into the buildings and began ripping and tearing his enemies to shreds. After fighting through the first few waves of enemies within the starport, Doomguy realized that something was amiss. 
The demons were smart, and when they invaded, they brought with them aspects of their own dimension. This instability inhibited the technology within the base, preventing Earth's inhabitants from evacuating their burning planet. In the distance, Doomguy spotted a Hell Outpost, a heavily fortified base for demonic operations. On the other side was a switch that would seemingly disengage the demon's hold on the Starbase's technology and allow what remains of humanity to flee. But first, he had to get there, which meant fighting any demon dumb enough to try and impede his progress. Eventually, he'd make it to the switch that controlled the odd technology that was stopping humankind from leaving the planet. Without hesitation, Doomguy disabled the mechanism, allowing the remaining people to evacuate. Sadly, this meant Doomguy had been left alone, the last surviving man on planet Earth. Pleased with his success, he accepted his fate. The lone marine was perfectly content dying, knowing that he had saved the rest of humanity. Suddenly, he received a message from the evacuated people, stating that they had discovered the source of the demonic invasion. If Doomguy were to go there, he might be able to close the gateway they were using to enter their world. Doomguy steeled himself and headed towards this new objective, which just so happened to be located in his hometown. Once he arrived, he took notice of what once was his place of origin. Unsurprisingly, everything he encountered had been destroyed by the demons. The portal he was looking for was on the other side of the ruined metropolis, so with what was likely a heavy heart, he pressed on and began trudging through the hell-ridden cityscape. He eventually arrived at the gateway, but unfortunately, there was no way to close it from this side. This left him with no choice but to venture back into hell in an attempt to stop the invasion from their dimension. Doomguy fought tooth and nail, killing every demon on his hate-fueled mission until coming face to face with an immense creature, seemingly the leader of the invasion. This was the Icon of Sin, likely Baphomet, the creature that had sabotaged one of the portals he'd used not so long ago. This beast was deadly, and was an entity that he would soon become all too familiar with. The giant monstrosity had the ability to summon minions at will, but it didn't matter. Each fell to Doomguy's insatiable appetite for demonic destruction. After firing several rockets into the beast's big brain, it too fell, leaving our hero stranded in hell. As it died, its massive limbs flailed spastically in the distance, destroying untold miles of terrain of Hell's landscape. With the beast defeated, he was free to head home, a journey that must have been long. Unfortunately, the details of this walkabout are unknown. After finally making his way home, Doomguy would eventually find himself on another UAC base, and unfortunately, a horde of demons seemed to be awaiting his return. One final demonic stronghold remained, established during Hell's initial invasion. Unsurprisingly, he dove straight in, ravaging the enemy forces in the area before once again being transported to the demon's home. He fought through them until encountering yet another cyber demon. This half-beast, half-machine monstrosity had been leveraging his forces in an attempt to keep a foothold on Earth and eventually reopen the gateway connecting the two dimensions together. Naturally, he failed miserably, and Doomguy blew him to pieces before returning to Earth. Our hero may have severed Hell's connection to his plane of existence, but that didn't mean humankind was safe. Under new leadership, the UAC continued their experiments, this time with a bit more caution. From now on, when they opened portals, they'd position a contingent of friendly forces just outside, ready to open fire at anything that decided to step through. The UAC had also moved their operations to some bases they had constructed on Jupiter's moons in hopes that this would help contain any future invasions. The thought process was that their distance from humankind's homeworld would help keep the demons away from it in the event that they lost control of the gateway. With these countermeasures in place, they opened their first portal, and demons unsurprisingly poured out, but this time they were ready, and the vile beasts were gunned down. Their plan was successful, and with that victory came a foolish sense of security. So the UAC continued their research, cautiously opening portals with marines watching over them. As they all kept their eyes fixed on the gateways, a demonic spaceship built of flesh and bone somehow made its way to one of the installations. Where the ship originated from is unclear. Perhaps it was sent into space during Hell's invasion of Earth? Regardless, the station's sensors detected its approach, but idiotically assumed it was a supply ship. That was until it got closer and began assaulting the base. In the fight, all but one man was killed. Doomguy, who had been promoted to the rank of commander. It was up to him to stop the invasion and show the demons that if they wanted to march into his world, he'd always be there to stop them. The first area he would make his way through were the experimental labs, likely the birthplace of the newly manufactured portals. 
Ahead was the military complex, a location he'd have to head through and clear out. On his way through the demon-infested buildings, Doomguy passed all manner of supplies. Most of it was being stored within crates of various sizes, many of which were labeled with not only the UAC logo, but a new logo as well. The letters TNT adorned many of the crates in the rooms. Perhaps Doomguy took notice of this oddity, the UAC's first example of utilizing a subcontractor to aid in their unholy scientific studies. More than likely, he paid them no mind, and continued on his journey, eventually making his way towards the sound of heavy machinery. Whatever the UAC was working on here was utterly irrelevant to Doomguy as he slaughtered his way through the mechanical areas. At the end lied another portal, and once he'd stepped through it, he'd be transported to hell once more. After slaughtering an incalculable number of monsters and a feat that was dizzying even compared to the full-fledged invasion on Earth's soil, Doomguy came face to face with another immense demon. It was the Icon of Sin the foul demon spitter he'd fought during his last hellish expedition. Somehow, the creature had survived their previous altercation, but regardless, Doomguy attacked with unparalleled ferocity. Since he'd defeated the creature before, he knew exactly how to take it down again. He equipped his trusty rocket launcher and fired into the monster's forehead. Several explosives later, and the beast was vanquished. An eerie calm settled over the environment, and it seemed he had won. Suddenly, the ground began to rumble, and a strange blue light began emanating from within the fallen demon's massive skull. Unfortunately, whatever happened next is unclear. Was Doomguy transported home? Or perhaps he was left stranded on the natural satellite? And what was the source of this strange blue light? All questions that remain, unfortunately, unanswered. Though we may not have a concrete answer as to how Doomguy managed to return home, perhaps that battle is a story told by the master levels. Some of the skyboxes in these maps depict a starry sky, while others have a clearly hellish hue. I suppose it's possible that each monster-filled gauntlet could take place within Hell. Maybe these levels are the journey he had to take to get back to Earth. Assuming this is true, Hell worked very hard to prevent him from getting home. He fought through heaps of demonic forces until he was once again confronted by the Icon of Sin. Like before, he fired several rockets into the beast's head and was able to escape. The UAC wasn't just experimenting with opening gateways and portals. They had learned from their previous mistakes and begun creating a device that was designed to close any new ones from far away, in case Hell tried to somehow invade once more. This quantum particle accelerator would be their best defense in case the demons should ever return. Unfortunately, the only way they would be able to test their designs would be by first opening more portals. The forces of evil had somehow become aware of the UAC's experiments and used one of the portals they'd been testing the new device on to re-enter the earthly dimension. This time, the UAC was ready. Using their newly crafted technology, they were able to close the gateway instantly. This minor victory wasn't enough to stop the demons though, and seven more portals were suddenly opened throughout the complex. The UAC acted fast, and were able to use their new machine to close six of the seven gateways, but in that time they had gotten overrun. All of the marines and scientists within the facility had been killed, so they frantically ordered all nearby military units to head to the location. One man in particular, Doomguy, was on leave at the time, enjoying a relaxing day off on the beach when he received the call. Without hesitation, he hopped into his automobile and sped to the facility. His orders were to find and eliminate the demonic gatekeeper, and in so doing, close the portal. When he arrived, he could hear all manner of horrors from inside, but at this point, these sounds were all too familiar. In just a few hours' time, the full might of an entire marine division would arrive with all manner of weapons and support, but the lone man somehow knew deep down inside that if he waited that long, it would be too late. If he didn't venture into the ruined UAC buildings and stop the demons right now, they would become far too strong and gain a foothold strategic enough to eliminate whatever that division could throw at them. He had no choice but to go it alone. Once again, he'd have to enter the heart of the demon infestation this time to retrieve the particle accelerator and end the demon's newest attempted invasion. After fighting through many monsters, the man made his way to a cyber demon guarding the device he sought. With extreme prejudice, he dispatched the beast as he'd done to many others before. Once the creature died, he looked around the room for the prototype piece of machinery he sought, but it was nowhere to be seen. That meant only one thing. It had been taken by the demons and that they likely planned to use it to open more portals. It was up to him to track it down. Hell's forces had created all manner of atrocities to try and stop him. In fact, they almost seemed desperate. One such creation took the form of a strange labyrinth packed to the brim with tons of archvile demons. Tall, ugly, deadly pyromancers with the ability to resurrect their fallen brethren. 
As I'm sure you can guess by now, even the horrific maze was no match for him. At the end of the winding passageways, he found the prototype particle accelerator, the machine they'd been using to open portals, and he destroyed it, guaranteeing the demons couldn't open any more doors to their home. Doomguy then fought into a demonic hive and eventually made his way to the Gatekeeper, the awful demon spitter from his previous altercations, the Icon of Sin. Doomguy knew this creature's weakness well, though, and after a quick battle, the monster fell once again and a final portal opened, creating what appeared to be some kind of black hole. This hellish gravity well sucked all of the remnants of the invasion into it, as well as the final pieces of the particle accelerators that the UAC foolishly assumed they could use against hell. With this win, Doomguy had finally rid the Earth of demonkind, sending their buildings, corpses, and any remaining stragglers on Earth back to where they came from, just south of heaven. Despite Doomguy's success in defeating the demons, nefarious forces were still at work, both human and inhuman in nature. A group of marines led by one man in particular, a brave soldier named Captain Eldon Brock, otherwise known as Phobos, were sent back to the UAC bases on Phobos to eliminate any last vestige of the demon infestation. But Eldon was about to face something even more sinister. Betrayal. In a downright evil attempt to learn more about the creatures that had been unleashed on Mars, the UAC intentionally sent Phobos to his death. His fellow soldiers had been given different orders than him. What those were exactly is unclear, but I imagine they intentionally put the man in harm's way. The question is, why? In the eyes of the UAC, they'd be able to learn more about these entities by watching someone like Phobos get slaughtered by them, rather than reading the reports of his success. Completely unaware of what his employers had planned, Phobos did his job and fought these insane invaders. Sadly, he was seemingly killed by their vicious onslaught. What knowledge the UAC gained from this so-called sacrifice is unclear, but needless to say, it surely wasn't worth essentially murdering a valuable asset like Phobos. The fate of his so-called brothers in arms, the other soldiers under his command that were seemingly aware of his upcoming demise, is unclear. Much like Crash though, this man's tenacity would be noticed by forces far beyond his understanding, and he would be abducted to compete in a twisted series of games where he was forced to fight and kill other remarkable individuals like himself. Unsurprisingly, the UAC wasn't done. Despite their numerous failures, the allures of hell and its potential treasures always seemed to call them back. In their research, they had discovered a particularly obscure section within the Dark Dimension referred to as Vizago's Rest. This strange pocket within Hell was packed full of useful resources and bizarrely lacked any demonic presence. Those within the UAC that discovered this place began calling it New Eden, as if more demonic forces surely weren't biding their time, lying in wait for the opportunity to strike. Eventually, they discovered why the demon forces were so thin in this unusual area. As it turns out, something else existed here too, something stronger. The Ones Beneath dark, winged creatures with the ability to conjure hellfire with their bare hands. The presence of the human company seemed to awaken them, and when they arose from their slumber, the so-called New Eden was quickly swallowed into a sea of blood. After it fell, the UAC's top brass made the only smart choice. They called Doomguy and set him loose on their newest installation. Within it was a portal, and once he stepped through, he was transported to the base within Hell, the UAC's crown jewel. It was, once again, up to him to clean up their mess and retake the lost base. Once inside Hell, the extent at which the UAC had established themselves started to become clear. One of the first things he encountered was a massive hydroelectric dam that appeared to siphon energy from a waterfall made of blood. In order to proceed, he'd first have to disable the flow of the red substance. After that was done, he passed through a door at the base of the dam and pushed onward. With each new location came brand new monstrosities and more strange machinery that was clearly attempting to make use of Hell's valuables. It didn't matter though. Regardless of whatever form Demonkind took or what structure the UAC built, it would all be destroyed just the same. After fighting past the Scar Gate and through the Sanguine Wastes within a region known as the Vulcan Abyss, he battled through the Ash Mill, the Spirit Drains, a descending inferno, a place called Creeping Hate, the Coiled City, and finally into an area referred to as Forfeited Salvation. Once he reached the end of this particular hellhole, a sudden trap was sprung. Several of the new creatures cornered him and beat him to a pulp, knocking him unconscious. A sudden realization washed over him in his stupor. The UAC knew the base was beyond recovery, so why did they send him in? Something else must have been hidden inside. Something secret, 
Now unconscious, the demons foolishly tossed him into a nearby cage instead of simply finishing the job. When he awoke, he did what he did best. He ripped and tore his captors to pieces and pressed on through the hellish landscape. He marched through counterfeit Eden, killing demons within a place called Second Coming, Falsehood, Disunion, Panopticon, Echoes of Pain, The Rack, A Soul Silo, and finally to a place simply called Brink. The further he pushed, the greater the forces that hell threw at him. Literally hundreds of demons at a time stood before him. Imps, archviles, cyberdemons, cacodemons, revenants, tyrants, each in groups of an almost incalculable number. Despite the overwhelming opposition, they fell beneath Doomguy's vicious onslaught all the same. Whatever the UAC was hiding here, the demons were trying absolutely desperately to stop him from getting to it. After thousands of the evil entities had been slain and the blood of his enemies now stained his well-worn boots, he came to a massive facility within a strange green liquid. This acidic sludge was likely the same radioactive waste seen elsewhere on UAC facilities, but instead of being made by human hands, it appeared to be literally flowing out of the hellish landscape like a toxic green volcano. Atop it sat a massive facility that was packed to the brim with some kind of nuclear warheads, each of which seemed to be making use of this strange hell juice. The UAC had experimented with hell for too long. Doomguy needed to end it, here and now. Without hesitating, he armed all of the missiles in the facility, setting a self-destruct sequence in motion that would destroy the entire complex. As the timer ticked down, he powered on a portal that allowed him to return to his home dimension. Once there, he stepped through. The portal sealed behind him and the explosives detonated. The detonation was massive, and it not only destroyed a vast swath of hell, but it also effectively stomped out the final UAC presence in his world. Unfortunately for Doomguy, his fight against the demons still hadn't ended though. A strict quarantine of the Mars bases was ordered and thanks to high levels of radiation present on the installations, no one dared break that rule. Somehow, a demonic entity had managed to survive Doomguy's initial purge and its presence went undetected because of the high radiation levels. This entity patrolled the facility and using its arcane abilities, it began resurrecting and mutating the very same demons Doomguy had previously slain. Our hero was the only survivor of the previous altercations, so naturally when this threat made itself known, he was tasked with eliminating this new growing problem. Doomguy arrived at the facility's darkened hallways. Everything in the station had remained dormant all this time, and many of the mechanisms within it struggled to function. When the demons had been resurrected, they returned stronger and more bloodthirsty than before, but fortunately, Doomguy's brief vacation hadn't weakened his resolve or dampened his skills. Stronger or not, he'd destroy the demon's foothold here. He knew this place, and he knew exactly how to combat these monsters, by serving them a belly full of lead. This time, they'd stay dead. After fighting through the station, Doomguy stumbled upon a portal. He looked at it and immediately knew exactly where it led. At this point, Doomguy was actually eager to enter their dimension, even though this was clearly a trap. He grinned and laughed maniacally as he stepped through and reappeared in their domain. At this point, the red skies seemed to feel like home to our hero. Clearly broken and disturbed from wading through the corpses of fallen demons, Doomguy strolled through the twisted plane with renewed vigor, this time with manic happiness. He slaughtered and killed each and every monster that would cross his path until he finally came face to face with a giant female demon. This beast was the mother of all demons, and she was angry. But Doomguy was angrier. This foul creature was the one responsible for resurrecting the demons in the Mars base, and Doomguy simply couldn't let that slide. With the help of a strange new weapon he discovered in Hell called the Unmaker, he slaughtered the mother and instead of returning home, made the decision to stay in the demon's home dimension. This time, he'd make absolutely sure that none of these vile creatures return to Earth. He'd stay here and make them pay. After Doomguy's fateful decision to remain in Hell, he was suddenly transported out, back into a strange dormant facility. His only concern, all he cared about, was returning to Hell once more. The demons couldn't be rid of him that easily. He made his way through the facility and back into the wretched plane. Once there, he was determined to find whoever was responsible for sending him back to his home dimension, and eventually he did. Another demon mother, a foul resurrector, and seemingly the sister of the beast he'd recently slain. Using the same weapon he found before, he absolutely eviscerated the creature. With it dead, nothing could stop him from venturing back to the Umbral Plane. Before him laid a path of perpetual torment, a path filled with demons of which he would rip and tear a path through doom.
Doom Guy spent an unknown amount of time in hell, but at some point during his brimstone vacation, he was somehow transported to an altogether different but equally evil place, the Arena Eternal. A series of realms created by eldritch old gods, with the sole purpose of forcing remarkable individuals from across the multiverse to battle each other to the death. The catch was, death wasn't the end. If someone fell in battle, they would simply be resurrected, with no other choice but to fight once more. How long Doomguy spent in this place is also unclear, but during that time, he was able to interact with his old friend Crash, his fellow space marine brother, Phobos. Too bad it was under such dire circumstances. I pity the poor fool that's forced to fight against the Demon Slayer himself. Doomguy likely was totally unaware this new location wasn't hell, and perhaps even thought his friends were cruel tricks employed by the demons. In the end though, after an unknown period of time, he would eventually make his way back to the Infernal Plane and fight on. You might be wondering why I didn't include anything from the original Doom novels. To be frank, those books simply can't be canon to the main Doom Guy's story. The narrative told in those novels diverges far too much from what happens in the games. It's quite possible that this timeline is canon via the multiverse, but that's a topic of conversation for another time. I also didn't include Sigil 2 because it didn't get an official release. However, the first Sigil did when Doom Plus Doom 2 was released, which is why it made its way into this video. I'd like to extend a hearty thanks to Hydra Kitten for helping me figure out some of this stuff and just in general being a sounding board for me. Thus concludes the original timeline, which eventually leads into the new one. If you'd like a part two dealing with the second half of the Slayer story, let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll make one. If you like timelines like this, I have two more on the channel detailing the events of some of the original Quake games. I bet you'll enjoy those if you made it this far, so go check those out. I'm also planning on releasing a Doom Bestiary that goes over every single demon and creature that lives within the main Doom universes. Maybe go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss that. Otherwise, that's all I've got for now. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go play some Doom.